This is 3 News Daily. Hello everyone, welcome back to 3 News Daily on this Monday, August 7th. I'm Stephanie Haney. Thank you for being here with us for what matters most to you here in Northeast Ohio. And this is a big week in the entire state of Ohio because after months of anticipation, Ohioans have their last chance to vote in the issue one special election tomorrow. Ohioans will either vote yes or no on whether to raise the number of votes needed to pass a constitutional amendment. It's the difference between requiring 60% of the vote or a simple majority, which is just over 50%. The state has required a simple majority of votes to pass constitutional amendments since 1912. Tens of thousands of early voters have already made their voices heard. We have about 60,000, this is with today's mail, about 60,000 back to us. That's about a 75% return rate. We will get up to about 90, so we still have probably another about almost 15,000 ballots that need to come back. Now for those voting in person, polls are open tomorrow from 6.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. If passed, issue one would take effect immediately. I'll be breaking down what the results of tomorrow's election mean for the November ballot, whether issue one passes or fails, in legally speaking segments today at 4 p.m. and 5 p.m. In the meantime, for me, even more information on issue one, including a list of groups that support and oppose the measure, you can check out our complete voter guide on our website on WKYC.com. And today, the trial begins for the Strongsville teenager who was behind the wheel during a fatal car crash last July. Mackenzie Sherilla is facing charges of murder for the deaths of Davian Flanagan and Dominic Russo. The Cuyahoga County Prosecutor's Office says Sherilla was driving her car faster than 100 miles per hour when it crashed into the Plitco building in Strongsville and killed her two passengers. Sherilla was 17 at the time. She's also facing charges of felonious assault, aggravated vehicular homicide, and drug possession. In Ashland County, the Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigation is looking into a shooting. The sheriff's office says a 63-year-old man was shot and killed by deputies Saturday night after being called to a home for a man with suicidal tendencies. The sheriff's office said the man approached them with deadly force and the deputies shot the man. The Ohio BCI investigates all officer-involved shootings. Now the baseball world can't stop talking about not the game, but the fight at Progressive Field on Saturday night. And t-shirts are even being sold as we continue to wait for the fallout. Today, as a decision is expected from the Major League Baseball officials on suspensions for Jose Ramirez and Tim Anderson. They're both facing multiple game suspensions for that brawl that happened during Saturday's game. They threw punches at each other at second base where Ramirez knocked down Anderson with a blow to his chin. So Ramirez, Anderson, and four others were ejected from the game after the fight. And Anderson didn't play yesterday, but Ramirez did. Now, when the decision comes down, the Guardians can expect to be without him for an extended period of time. And as the Pro Football Hall of Fame Enshrinement Festival came to a close, the 2023 enshrinees had a roundtable discussion at the Canton Memorial Civic Center yesterday. Members of the new class shared stories about their lives and their careers. Browns legend Joe Thomas shared what his favorite part of Hall of Fame week has been. But for me, that moment when you realize the best part is not just us making friends with each other and inviting each other into our family, but seeing like our kids like at the game. It's a preseason game, guys. Our kids have sat through a lot of preseason games. They're not always the most exciting. My kids did not want to leave because they were sitting right next to Zach Thomas's daughters and they were having the time of their life. And to see like our family linking and making those connections that we've all made since we got announced at the Super Bowl has easily been the best part of the whole week. That's pretty amazing to think about. And congratulations to Joe and all the new enshrinees. And with that, the 2023 football season is officially underway. All right, here's your lottery update. There was no jackpot winner yet again in Friday's Mega Millions drawing. This means the cash rolls over and the jackpot is now $1.55 billion. That's the second largest jackpot in the lottery's history. The next drawing will be tomorrow on Tuesday at 11 p.m. And we know lots of people play when the jackpot gets that big. So we can only expect that prize money to go up. All right, thanks for being with us today for this edition of 3 News Daily. Wherever you're watching or listening, we appreciate you. We'll see you back here tomorrow with more of your top stories from Northeast Ohio.